Okay, go ahead. Yours. So, uh, the two uh, most important questions in... Two most important questions in uh, condensed matter nuclear science are, firstly, what is the mechanism which allows uh, nuclear reactions to take place although the interparticle distances are large compared to nuclear distances. And secondly, uh, how the energy released uh, will uh, transfer to heat. Now, as um, Dave this morning showed us, uh, there has been uh, more than 20 different uh, proposed theories to answer this either or both of these questions. However, uh, no agreement has been reached between these 28 years of research. And due to the lack of this uh, agreement, uh, I have to uh, skip these most important questions, and, and I will assume that uh, there is some yet unknown or at least unproved uh, explanation explaining these uh, two uh, things. Uh, initially, the energy released can be in form of um, energy of the initial energy carriers, which can be phonons, photons, electrons, uh, deuterons, uh, depending on the model. But I assume that uh, due to the collisions, uh, the energy will be thermalized. Um, within a submicron region of order 100 nanometers, large enough so that there will be no melting of the uh, lattice. And I will here consider uh, how that uh, heat will be diffused away from, from this uh, submicron region. So I, I will uh, consider um, the standard thermal uh, diffusion equation uh, where this D uh, 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 D is the diffusion constant which can be expressed by the uh, thermal conductivity and the specific heat uh, uh, per volume. And uh, the specific heat can be expressed by uh, this Toulon Petit law. Um, you may have noticed that I have used his here uh, factor six and not the usual three. And that's because uh, I'm considering fully loaded metal, let's say fully loaded palladium. And uh, when the number of atoms are doubled, so also is uh, the vibration modes doubled. And that's why uh, this uh, specific heat uh, is twice as large as normal. Uh, not only is this um, specific heat larger uh, in the loaded metal, same is also true for this, um, this thermal conductivity because it's proportional to number of uh, free electrons. And uh, when we load the metal with deuterium, um, the electrons of uh, deuteriums uh, 
are added to the free electron gas. So as a first approximation, I uh, can consider this diffusion constant to be independent of the loading. Also, um, this um, specific heat is independent of the temperature. As far as we can neglect the small contribution arising from the degenerate electron gas, which is at most few percent. Moreover, uh, this thermal conductivity can be related to electrical conductivity through the weidemann branch equation. And at the temperatures not too low, um, the uh, temperature dependence in the weidemann franz uh, law arises uh, entirely uh, from the electrical conductivity. So, uh, so as a first approximation, I can consider this thermal conductivity, and that's way the diffusion constant as a true constant in such a way that it is not uh, temperature dependent. Uh, so the value uh, for the diffusion constant uh, is given here. And um, in the standard solution of thermal diffusion equation, now this is now here, um, is given here. And I assume that, oh, first, um, the thermal distribution at, the, at some later time can be expressed by the initial thermal distribution at zero time. And I assume that this uh, initial thermal distribution is an ambient temperature plus uh, some uh, temperature increase uh, due to the uh, uh, released energy of a fusion reaction. And for sake of simplicity, I assume that uh, uh, this uh, energy uh, will be thermalized in a sphere of radius R0. So using this um, spherical symmetry, I can write this um, thermal distribution in this way, where this kernel function is given here in the, as the combination of these two exponential functions. Now I will um, iterate this, uh, this solution of uh, diffusion equation in such a way that uh, I assume that at the time t0 uh, uh, the next uh, initial distribution uh, this di uh, distribution given here plus uh, another uh, temperature increase arising from the next uh, fusion reaction. And then I will continue this uh, so that I have uh, several Several, uh, sorry, um, several uh, fusion reactions, all uh, separated by this uh, time interval t zero. Um, I can express it this thermal distribution by the sum, and every term in this sum corresponds to one uh, fusion reaction. Uh, the first term corresponding to the first one, occurring at the time zero, and this, this last term corresponds to the last one at time uh, n times t zero. Now the highest temperature 
is of course in the center. So I will take the limit uh, r going to zero. And um, using this limit, uh, I can write uh, the temperature in the center in the following way. And uh, um, using this uh, limiting uh, formula, I can uh, perform these integrals one by one, all of them except the last one. And what I get um, is the following one. Um, I have here assumed continuous power, um, letting the n goes to infinity, so that uh, I will have those consecutive uh, fusion reactions for a very long time. Um, for numerical calculation, um, the conversions of this summation is uh, uh, at least rather good. Um, um, even better uh, conversions can be found if we expand this exponential function by uh, thermal expansion and integrals. Now, this temperature increase uh, can be expressed by the energy released uh, and the specific heat, which can be expressed by the uh, volume of the sphere and, uh, and the number density of, of the metal atoms. Also, uh, the time, time interval can be related to, to the excess power. Uh, I put this uh, in, the, uh, in the temperature. here and uh, then I demand that this uh, central temperature will be lower than the uh, melting temperature. Uh, putting some numbers here, I, I use the released energy uh, that we get uh, from deuterium deuterium uh, fusion. I'm totally aware that uh, that this deuterium deuterium fusion, fusion is not accepted by all researchers. There are some alternative ideas, but uh, uh, but I will use this. And um, uh, if we have some other model, uh, it's just change the number here. Also putting the number uh, density of of the palladium atom here. Uh, I can calculate uh, what is the maximum power that is possible uh, assuming that the energy was initially uh, thermalized in, uh, in the sphere of radius R0 so that the temperature uh, will be below the melting temperature. And uh, performing the numerical calculation axis I have the radius in nanometers and in the vertical axis I have the excess power in, in, in watts. Um, now going to consequences of this simplified calculation or, or conclusions that can be drawn from this calculation uh, 
exactly. Um, provided that the lower nuclear reaction mechanism allows the released energy to thermalize within a sub, sub micro scale for 100 nanometers, uh, the thermal conduction is is high enough so that it allows uh, continuous power to exist. Uh, and uh, power up to one watt or at least almost one watt can originate from one single spot or one single nuclear active environment. If we, if we use the concept proposed by uh, storms. Uh, now, as Michael McCooper today showed us, um, in half of the uh, electrochemical uh, experiments, uh, the excess energy reported has been something like one watt, of order one watt. So this means that it is possible that in those experiments, the excess power has originated only from one single spot of order hundred nanometers. I think that this is compatible with the fact that we are dealing with very rare effect. And um, when we are using, a, when we are performing an experiment, um, it may happen that uh, uh, during the evolution of the uh, of the surface in the electrolysis, uh, there will no no nuclear active environment up there, or then we can get maybe just one or very few, and just occasionally we will get uh, several uh, those active environments. Moreover, um, this calculation suggests that uh, surface studies may have uh, rather limited values because uh, typically in those surface studies only average values are considered. And um, we cannot have control over the whole cathode surface within the accuracy of 100 nanometers. So uh, it may happen that, uh, that the crucial uh, properties of that uh, nuclear active environment will remain hidden. As a final conclusion, uh, this result uh, or calculation may be used, uh, hopefully may be used to uh, the rest of possible theoretical models, especially uh, possible initial energy carriers. Uh, so thank you very much for your attention. It is really correlates with the calculations I presented in Padora and earlier, stating that for small spots, the tiny scale for the, for the heat, uh, let's say, uh, evolution is very, very fast. So it, it, this is not surprising that if you have heat deposition on a single spot, you can indeed have a, a lot of heat at, at atomic scale before reaching high temperatures? Uh, yes, there was a, uh, yeah, I'm aware of that, that 
work. Uh, I think that uh, that yeah, I mean uh, the uh, extra information I have got here is that uh, we really uh, can get the substantial power uh, arising from one spot. Professor, according to your uh, scenario, uh, have you done any estimate concerning uh, the maximum power density that we can uh, achieve in our uh, uh, materials? Um, well, I haven't done any no. calculation of that. Uh, it, it depends how many nuclear... I think uh, the crucial question is how many uh, nuclear active environment or, or, or nuclear active spots we can get on, on the surface. Another comment here is that if you have so few active environments, it, you may very well get zero. And it explains the non-reproducibility of uh, many experiments. Yes, that's true. Maybe the last question, because okay, yeah. um, So according to your model of the storm, the uh, diameter of active uh, material, active spot, is uh, about 100 nanometer range or larger? Um, that is a big crucial point. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, I think that's a, uh, that's a model dependent question. Um, it, it might be something like this 100, 100 nanometers, uh, uh, 400 nanometers or, or, or less, depending uh, uh, what the correct model is. Okay, I think we should stop here. Now, thank you very much again for the interesting work and the uh, coffee break.